Welcome to John McGivern's Main Streets, the podcast that takes you behind the scenes of this popular TV program. I love it. <laughs> You'll hear from John, Main Streets producer and director Lois Maurer, and that episode's content producer as they share some of their favorite memories from filming and interesting stories that you won't find anywhere else. Today's episode, The Menominee Valley in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This week we're talking about Menominee Valley, which is a neighborhood in Milwaukee. And we're back with Lance Miller, who was our content producer, and Lois Maurer, of course, our executive producer and director. And Menominee Valley, I am telling you, this was a treat. First, <laughs> because we were home. Mm -hmm. we, we all live in Milwaukee. And um, I got to, uh, to the production office on my scooter, which was great. Right. I came from home. It took me seven minutes. Yeah. One day I rode my bike. It's, yeah. It was really nice. And what content we had in Menominee Valley. Talk about it, Lance. It, it's, a very, it's a very surprising place. Uh, for those of you who are not from the Milwaukee area, uh, the Menominee Valley is some place, it's near a ballpark, and um, it's one of those things that for year, for decades, people would drive their cars down the, down the expressway, they go, coming in from the suburbs, going to downtown, you always pass this, and it just, for years, it looked like nothing was going on there. It, it's one of these places that um, uh, the Rust Belt affected it and, and killed this neighborhood, but for the last 20 years, they have put a lot of uh, elbow grease and money and effort into bringing this, this part of the city back. And uh, and they've successfully done it. It's really become a very nice place to, to shop and visit. Because you never had to pass through it, ever. Right. Right. Because you always passed above it on the freeway. Yeah. And you could see it below. And, th and the oddest thing about this neighborhood is what, Lois? There's no neighbors in terms of <laughs> residents. Right. So when we first talked about doing the Menominee Valley, Lance, you were very persistent about, I'm telling you, there is so much stuff to see down there. And my one hang-up was, but nobody lives there. Right. But what we found was that there was so much content. And this is kind of one of those neighborhoods in Milwaukee that's up and coming. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are migrating back here because there's so many things coming to the valley. And there really is a sense of community here because people who have discovered the valley who work here, there's like 10,000 people working right. in the valley. Yeah. They all have a great sense of pride and community about working in the valley. That's right. very important to people. And um, uh, and the other sense of community that, that we found for the episode was part of uh, our ballpark, our local team is the Brewers, they play at American Family Field, part of their parking lot is in the valley, and so we did a thing about, we did a one segment on tailgating. Now tailgating is uh, very common in football, but it's not very, I think there's only six teams in all of baseball that allow you to tailgate, oh, and really? Milwaukee is, is is one of them, and I think that, that leads to a, a, an interesting sense of community. And it just so happened that when we covered that and talked about it, it was a home game, of course, between the Brewers and the Cubs. And <laughs> well, now, truth be told, that didn't just so happen. Lance planned it that way. <laughs> that's right. Th that's what I meant to say. Yeah. Because it's, yeah. it's very known in the Milwaukee area that when the Cubs are in town, they basically take over the park. A lot of people who live in Northern Illinois who are Cubs fans, it's just cheaper, easier, and faster to yeah. come up to Milwaukee to see a game than it is to go to Wrigley Field. Plus they get to tailgate. And it's right. to park. And it's easy to park. That's one of the most fun segments of the show. And I honestly, love. we had fun there. I mean, the we Cubs did. fans, we, you know, there's this huge rivalry, but even when they come to Milwaukee, I think it adds like this vitality. People yeah. are, it's a fun rivalry. I, I never see it get messy, which is. It's never mean. No, and the day that we were there, we had a good time. <laughs> It all depends on what happens at the game. <laughs> yeah. So the west end of the valley is American Family Field. Oh. To the east is one of the most exquisite things we have, which is the Harley, Harley Davidson Museum. Yes. And I have to say, this is going to be hard to believe, that was actually my biggest surprise of the episode. Oh, really? The because Harley I knew, Museum? Yes, because I knew it was going to be great because it has a great reputation. But uh, I'm not really into motorcycles at all. So I just don't know how interested I was going to be in it. They have done such an exquisite job putting that museum together yeah. because there is something for everybody with every interest. If you're interested in innovation or style or history or pop culture or World War II, there is something in that museum mm -hmm. for you. They made it so that people like me who have no interest in motorcycles, were, you'll be absolutely fascinated if yeah. you go. And you know the best thing in that museum? Bill Davidson. Oh, right. 
Right. He, uh, it's really a fun interview to do because John, you know him and he knows you. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, he's spending a time guy. with a friend. Yeah. yeah. And he's just as unassuming as can be and as generous as can be. And it, you know, that family tie in yeah. Milwaukee really is deep. And yeah. you just sense it when you talk to Bill, which was really, really exciting. So this is our new Harley Davidson shop. It's beautiful. It's hard to work here and not come in here and buy something. Yeah. So my closet's at home. <laughs> you need to take a week off so you can save some money. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> There's something magical about a Harley Davidson. The places you see, mm -hmm. the people you meet. We attract people from all walks of life, from all over the world. And in between what's to the east, which is Harley Davidson, uh -huh. and what's to the west, American Family Field, smack dab in the middle of that is Potawatomi. Yeah. So Potawatomi Resort and Casino, which is a huge draw for the valley, and not only hotel, but entertainment, and restaurants and a casino. And really was the first thing in the valley, don't you think? Like when people talked about coming to the valley. They came to play ago. bingo. Yep, the bingo hall. Right? Yeah, yeah, people, yeah, and people who, uh, who visit the valley, I don't know that, but uh, a lot of people refer to themselves as the St. Paul Pioneers. Uh, and a couple of the pioneers were uh, Sobelman's, which is the bar where yes. you get the crazy, yes. um, the crazy Bloody Marys, and BBC Lighting, which is this amazing. Yep. Lighting Star, we can talk some more about that. But then after those two places, there was really nothing going on until Potawatomi came. BBC Lighting, come on. How great a place is that? Place it's, is that? it's one of my, might be my favorite store in the city. Really? Oh, oh yeah. It's really, and yeah. it's an experience. It's not just a store. That is an experience. And I think anybody that has bought a house, went to rent, anybody that has a room to fix up. And Needs think, a lamp. You gotta go, right? I can't, I, I, yeah. I don't. They, they, what they do is they, they look at how much the lamps are going for on the internet and they knock off like 10 or 15%. But it's not just the lamps. They have all the stuff for like man caves and rec rooms. They have, you know, like uh, slot machines and jukeboxes. Stuff you have no ideas statues. in there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's it's no crazy. Reason. You'll walk through and go, what is that doing here? Yeah. And we talked to Hank. Wasn't this, isn't the owner's name Hank? Yeah. And we talked to him and all that stuff is in there for the enjoyment of the customers. He said to me, I don't really even need to sell any of this. Right. I just love that stuff in here because people get a kick out of it. Absolutely. And um, they have the autograph of the guy who arrested <laughs> Lee Harvey Oswald. <laughs> like, where did he get it? Yeah, he, has, he has a tire from uh, one of Al Capone's vehicles. Well, where, how did he get that? Yeah. No, I believed it. I believed every word of it. BBC stood for something bulb company. It was like right? Badger Bulb Company. Badger you got bulb it, Lance. Company, that's it. Right. And that's how it started literally light bulbs. And now it's literally everything. Yeah. <laughs> that was very cool. And the fact that he showed us around and his wife was there and his oh, kid who works there. That's yeah. Again, family, yeah. family business. Deep roots. And we, we have a million some people in our surrounding Milwaukee County area. I'm going to say, 90% of people who live in this area are like, BB if you say BBC, they'll be like, oh yeah, I got a lamp there. I got, I got lighting there. I mean, there. people know that place. Absolutely. Want to wear something that's going to support your favorite show? Shop at Main Street Store. Proceeds go to help us get next season into production. So come on, go shopping at MainStreets.tv. You know, I've got to talk about insurance. Are you stressed and overwhelmed with your Medicare Advantage plan options? It's ironic, really. The thing you need the most causes you stress. And it doesn't have to be that way. I chose Network Health because it's not stressful. For 40 years, they've provided health insurance to Medicare members throughout Wisconsin. And their customer service, oh, let me tell you something, it's like nothing I've ever experienced before. So if you're looking for a Medicare Advantage plan and you want to be relieved of stress, you got to call my friends at Network Health. Call 844-277-7174 today. That's 844-277-7174. Don't wait. Full disclosure, we're sitting in the Menominee Valley right now at right. Plum Media. We right. were one of the St. Paul we're, Pioneers. They call, us, they call us that, yeah. St. Paul Pioneers. And there is a place that we went to in this episode that I've gone past hundreds of times that I've never even knew was there. What is it, John? It's the pickle place. Yes. Bayview Packing Company. 
the Bayview Packing Company. It's this blue building. If you've ever seen Harry Potter, this is the Harry Potter building. It just disappears. Like you drive <laughs> it looks by. Like a, it looks like a garage. <laughs> you drive by and you never notice it and you've never seen it. And then we went in there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Basically what they do there is they make all the food from 100 years ago before people had refrigerators and needed a lot of pickle preserved foods. So that's where you get the uh, pickled eggs, uh, turkey gizzards, pork hocks, everything that sounds disgusting until you actually try it. Yep. Which we had no trouble getting John to do because you like pickled stuff. I do. Yeah. I do. You know, I was raised on herring. So, um, you know, a good pickled herring, which they do. Yeah. The vinegar, not the cream. And he has a buffet of flavored <laughs> eggs. So he cut up a couple for me. And... If you think of pickled eggs and sitting in that pickled juice, and you, see, you used to see them on the tavern Absolutely. bars is yeah, what you yeah, see them. Exactly. Which they said that business, there's not much of that anymore. Right. Um, now they do specialty, you know, canning and jarring for companies that put their label on it. But it comes out of here, out of Milwaukee. I'm fourth generation, and I have my three boys here with me. They're fifth generation. So like pig's feet and pork hocks and pickled herring and sauerkraut and pickles. All those things that people could have that are preserved where they didn't have a whole lot of refrigerator space. Are there still bars that have uh, your product? When I started, I'd probably say we were 65 to 70% tavern and like 30% grocery. And now that's probably 75, 25 grocery to tavern business. It all comes right out of here? Yes. Apparently, pickled eggs are a very important part of Southern cooking. Southern. Right. Yeah. So they do a lot of business there. Is that funny? It is, it is funny. And, you know, when, when we did the site survey and we went in there and, tr and tried the stuff, it was like, I, I thought to myself, no, the turkey gizzards. It's Poor going to Lance. Be the look on your face was like, <laughs> oh, she's going to make me eat this. Uh, and then he gave us each a bite and weren't, weren't you surprised? It was fantastic. Yeah, it was, I was, it was so kind of, surprised. <laughs> I can imagine that stuff, all that pickle stuff on a charcuterie board without <laughs> yes. a problem. Yes, but the My best favorite. part about that place is there's a store in the front. There you is. You can literally walk in that door and buy anything pickled you want right in the front of that store. What was my favorite moment, though, in that store? When Lance came out in his outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Lance my... had shorts on. And then he had on this white coat. Because this butcher's you jacket. You have, that, that, the FDA says you have to wear this butcher's jacket. That to. went to his knees so you didn't know he had shorts on. So it looked like a kind of a, well, he looked like my fourth grade teacher, <laughs> Sister Mary Generos. He had on hair this white hairnet <laughs> and this white coat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was my favorite. We all had to wear it. So we did. To we go all in had there, to wear it. You know, but the last one I was like, oh, yeah. my God. So that was, that was one of the food items. But what was the most terrific thing? The most terrific, surprising, the, 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 the volume that comes out of this place in the valley that, of something that we all love is mm -hmm. what? Palermo's. Palermo's Pizza. Palermo's mm -hmm. Pizza. It, right here in the Menominee Valley in Milwaukee is one of the largest frozen pizza factories in the country. I'm just going to say the world, and if they say I'm lying, I don't care. I would, that, that's, that wouldn't be out of line. Right. Wasn't yeah. it? It was shocking to me. It was yeah. incredible. It was like going into Willy Wonka's it was. Taco, taco <laughs> factory. It was. It was. It was because you have no idea how it gets done. And my very favorite thing was the sauce splatter. Oh, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. that was like. They basically uh, have like, for lack of a better term, a sauce gun that shoots the sauce in a perfect right. you know, It's like manner. a shower head, right? It's kind of like. It comes down so fast your eye can't catch it. It's pretty, it's pretty incredible. You need to get your eyes checked because I caught it last Yeah, time. okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the sausage thing that they oh, cut it, it was right heaven. there. And it, it was heaven. Yeah. It's amazing. So the brands that we know that they do, so if people are like Palermo's, I don't know Palermo's, but they do Screamin'. Screamin' oh. Sicilian, which is available in like every Walmart in America. Yep. Yeah. They also do... Uh, Connie's that came out of Chicago. Connie's. They bought Connie's, the right to Connie's, which right. I knew Connie's out of Chicago. Urban Pie is theirs as well. Oh, that's Urban right. Pie. Urban Pie. Very good. And that cauliflower that crust one, with too. mozzarella and pesto. Like they've got, they do a really good job. Yeah. And I knew Palermo's because it was, uh, it was an East Side restaurant. So growing up, right. it was, it was right down near North Avenue on, on Murray. Mm -hmm. It was on Murray and North Avenue. And it was just a, 
there, that's like Zafiro's Pizza and Lisa's Pizza, and right. on the east side of Milwaukee, Palermo's was another You're one. You're kidding! It was just a neighborhood pizza right. place. Yeah, oh, actually, it was a bakery. That. It was a bakery. Then it was a pizza place. Wow. And then I think they had. Actually, I think how it started in one of their businesses, they were giving out pizza slices to people who were waiting. And some guy who was a distributor for a grocery said, "You guys should sell this frozen. This is terrific." And then that's how they got into oh. the frozen pizza business. Out of on the a, basement first. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and now their place uh, on a bad day. On a bad day, they make two hundred thousand frozen pizzas. A day. That's not a bad day. If they really put their mind to it and they're making one kind of pizza all day long, they could make half a million pizzas a day if they really wanted to. Wow. Isn't that amazing? It's a good episode. It's a really good episode. We love to stay home and <laughs> it was great to be at home and to be so close to all of this content. Again, Lance, you did a great job and you certainly gave us so much to look at and so many people to talk to. And, and you really brought a neighborhood that we should have known very well yeah. to us because we didn't know. And right. so know. we're just thrilled that you I didn't talked know, us into it. <laughs> I didn't know anything about it, you know, like a lot of people. Again, it, it was it's a Rust Belt town, so that always gets a bad reputation of being like a lousy part of town. But when we moved our business, Plum Media here, the people who worked here sort of discovered, wow, this place is interesting, this place is interesting. We got to know the the uh, Menominee Valley Partners, who is sort of the um, the tourism, the local tourism board. And, uh, and, and, and here's the thing, this town or this part of the city keeps growing. Potawatomi is expanding. Yep. A lot of businesses here are, are growing. Um, uh, they and, just, it's, and it's a lot of outdoor yeah. stuff, too, because the Urban Ecology Center is there and the Hank Aaron Trail runs right through it. So there's a lot yeah. of people discovering the valley in different ways. You don't just have to come down here to shop. Right. There's a wonderful park here and there's, in, the middle of all, yeah. in the middle of all the factories. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great episode. Again, uh, thanks so much, Lance. You do a great job. And um, I can't wait to see what you pitch next season. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Curious to find out where John is traveling next? Head over to our website, MainStreets.tv, to learn more. Again, that's MainStreets.tv. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and please leave us a review. It helps more people discover great programming like Main Streets. Look for us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to follow all the action. John McGivern's Main Streets is produced by Plum Media in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.